So let's talk about women's MVP for 2023. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, Ray Ripley is is going to be very high on this list. I would assume, I would think that she's the odds-on favorite, you know, between just being a uh, focal point. You know, I mean, really um, the most pushed consistently through, through the last uh, eight months or so of the year with Judgment Day. Um, getting really, really over um, her match with Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania was probably the best American women's match of the year. And, um, you know, just retain the title. They've kept Becky Lynch out of that picture and probably till WrestleMania. And so, yeah, I, um, I can't, uh, I don't think that, you know, I, I think it's, I think she's going to win in a, in a, or she, or in a, in a major way. I mean, um, in Japan, um, you know, Tam Nakano, Nak Nakano got uh, the Women's MVP award, but um, you know, I just think Rhea Ripley uh, stronger candidate this year. So, um, AEW, um, I mean, who would you say was the Women's MVP? I mean, you could sort of say Tony Storm came on at the end of the year. Um, she's getting a lot of uh, uh, TV time with a gimmick. But uh, I don't think it's enough to win this year's award. And um, Hater getting hurt. Yeah, she had a, Hater had a good chance actually until yeah. she got hurt, or at least at least a chance to be top three. Um, you know, um, Julia had a shot. I think it. I think Julia may be, may you know even though I'm not going to win the uh, Japan awards, I think I think Julia was more valuable. You know, she got not going to got it because she held the two belts at the same time. Um, cause I think she was, she was carrying the company, but hater would have, um, I mean, who knows what would happen? Hater would have had, you know, been a, in a headline match at Wembley and, um, you know, that could have been, um, the reaction to that and everything could have been really, you know, tremendous, but it didn't happen. You know, you can't vote for what doesn't happen. So, um, yeah, I would say, uh, Ripley, uh, pretty strong in this one. And even without the injury mercedes probably wasn't wrestling enough to to garner a, a ton of votes right well i mean it just depends on what she would have done after the injury i mean if she would have come to aew let's say you know and and been a big factor and everything like that who knows right but it didn't happen you know none of it happened so um um you know she, i don't think she worked enough in japan or would have worked enough in japan alone um to be even the japanese women's mvp but um you know i mean if she she was around and helped you know rebuild aew you know women's division none of that happened so i would say i i don't even you know she did a couple matches um i mean early in the year you know i mean she she certainly uh created some interest in the Tokyo Dome show and her match in San Jose with uh, Kyrie was a great match and all that. And, um, you know, Stand, standing with Okada at the end of the show. Yeah. She was shooting her own angle there, which we never, <laughs> we never, we never did get anything out of that one. And, um, then, uh, she had the match with Willow, you know, and, and that ended unfortunately, but that's all, you know, so again, they're both what ifs they were hurt. They were hurt too much. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see when Hater comes back, if she can re pick up momentum and Mercedes, you know, if she ends up in WWE, she'll probably get a, um, I mean, it's interesting now because with Charlotte Flair being hurt, um, it would help, you know, I mean, Mercedes would probably be groomed for the top, um, baby face spot on the SmackDown, uh, women's roster. You know, you would think, you know, that, that, the, the spot that, uh, Charlotte Flair would have had and Charlotte Flair's out for, you know, most of next year. Yeah. If she goes back, I mean, you never with Mercedes, you just don't know because she really does keep her business very quiet. I mean, like when she was hurt, she didn't tell anyone anything, her recovery time. Nobody knew, you know what I mean? Um, we know she was negotiating with AEW, but we don't know how close at all, you know, it is. And there's certainly been no teases at all on AEW television of her or even anything. Um, and I was always skeptical, you know, again, like when she went to Japan, it was for a few dates. It was not for a long term. 
So I always thought she's leaving the door open for WWE. And I think that that, you know, if she goes to AEW, um, I'll be wrong. You know, I mean, in the sense, because if she goes to AEW, she's going to have to sign multi-year deal or it's not worth having her. And, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, it probably, I could see um, if she's going to go to AEW to keep it quiet until she can make her surprise return. I don't think that they would advertise it ahead of time for the, the first pop. Um, first match, obviously, they would. Um, so, um, but with WWE, I would say the same thing. I expect her uh, relatively soon to pop up pop up on somebody's TV. You know, could be Royal Rumble, could be whatever. On Busted Open Radio today, Scott Diamore said, we're going to have some surprises for you, some unexpected things, including... Guys, we are right there at the goal line of finalizing one of, I think, the biggest signings in TNA. It's, I think it's something that's going to really shake things up here on January 13th. Who can yeah. you be talking about? There's a whole slew of guys that are uh, on the 21st of this month, which is uh, Thursday, that become free agents. So... Um, they could debut as soon as Saturday for AEW, and uh, they could debut when uh, TNA has that big, you know, show on the 13th in Vegas. And, you know, there's a long list of guys, but the three big ones are um, Dolph Ziggler, Nick, Nick Nemeth, um, Mustafa Ali, and Matt Riddle. And um, so I would presume the way he talked, it it, you know, Riddle is an interesting one because there's all the, you know, there's there's a lot, there's a very negative stigma around Riddle. Um, I mean, it's funny because when he was in WWE, nobody said anything. And then as soon as he was out and the idea is he could go to AEW, then it became like this big, <laughs> oh my God, right? You know, it's like what a double standard that was. And with Impact, um, they would get some flack for him. But nothing like AEW would get. I mean, they could survive that one, no problem, if that's what they wanted. And he is a big name, um, good wrestler and all that. Nemeth is probably the safer pick. Um, you know, if, is that a game changer? No. He's a talented guy. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, I would, you know, looking at the lay of the land, if AEW doesn't want him, and I don't know if they do or they don't, uh, that would be the place to go. And Impact does have, from what I gather, you know, earmarked some money to where they can spend some money on a big free agent. Um, whether they would or could outbid AEW, I mean, it, it's doubtful they could, but, you know, you don't know how much Tony would be willing to spend on one of those names. Um, and there's other names on the list, but I don't think any of the other names are big enough for, to warrant what Scott said. Um and um, you know, so those are the, the 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 obvious choices. I don't think there's anyone whose WWE contract is coming due who hasn't either resigned or uh, or and, and again, you know, I you know the the the, the what Impact has Impact does t tape, um, you know, very few matches. If you want to do your indies, you can do your indies. There is something to be said for that. If you want to really slow down. But it's a very it's very low visibility, you know, being on Access TV. Um, AEW obviously much higher visibility, and um, you know, um, but again, you know, I mean, I, I think that that's you know that's probably who we're we're talking about um, would be, you know, one of that list of guys that WWE cut almost three months ago, right at three months ago. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.